almost 30 years ago, Colin Stagg was a victim of one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in British criminal history. The then 29-year-old was wrongfully arrested and charged over the brutal death of a young mum, Rachel Nickell, whose name I'm sure you will remember. She was murdered as she walked on Wimbledon Common with her two-year-old son. Now, this story is now the subject of a new Channel 4 drama called Deceit. Well, we're now joined by Colin Stagg. Good morning to you. Thanks very much for coming into the studio to talk to us about this. How do you feel now about what happened? Obviously, it's almost 30 years on. You were wrongly arrested, you were wrong charged. You were held in custody for 13 months. You were awaiting trial. You, you must have thought at that stage, this could be it. Well, yeah, obviously, when I was in, uh, inside prison, um, I, I thought that was going to be the end of my life. You know, the, the, it was going to go to jury and the jury weren't going to take any chances and um, I was going to be convicted. Um, but looking back on it now, it's, um, it's just a, an incident that happened in my life, like we all have, you know, basically. You know, we, we, just, we just forget about it. Which is quite extraordinary that you're able to have processed it in that way, because I imagine, you know, there are those people who would just remember your name as being associated, might not remember the details. Do you still get, even now, those people who have suspicions about what happened? Um, yeah, it's, it's mainly because, like, the newspapers, they pre printed so many articles about me which just wasn't it true, stories that weren't true. And um, when uh, Robert Napper was uh, finally arrested, there was hardly anything in the newspapers about it at all, and which was unfair, really. And you were 29, weren't yeah, you, when this yeah. happened? You, I think you say you were shy? Yeah, I was just quiet. a very shy, immature young man, like we, we, most of us are when we're younger. Yeah, and that sort of shyness, particularly around women, for example, yeah, at that age, yeah. was one of those things that, um, well, somebody put your name forward, didn't they, after a crime? Was it after Crime Watch? Somebody yeah, yeah. put your name forward as, as a potential suspect. And from that moment forward, it seems, and you have worked with this drama, haven't you, Deceit? Yeah, yes. Um, what did you tell the writer of Deceit about, about the, those moments leading up to your arrest and how, and how it was that you felt your character as a shy man at 29, slightly awkward, you yeah. know, socially awkward <laughs> yeah. person, yeah. framed you. Your character framed you. There was no evidence, there was no DNA, there was, it was all down to sort of the sort of impression you left on people. Yeah, it was a kind of character assassination, mainly. You know, I mean, I was being picked on because I was a young, immature guy. And, uh, uh, I mean, we're all awkward when we're young and <laughs> at that age and that, so... How do you think but, you come across in the drama? Um, I come across it quite well. Um, um, there are a few items which I could argue against, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not bothered about that. I, th I yeah. thought you... It, there's a, uh, is there a bit of you that thinks you come across as creepy? I know I've read that oh, no. somewhere. Yeah. That you think you come across as creepy in the drama? Yeah, I think that's just a dramatic licence, really, for the programme. Um, I never came across like that at all. But for the drama as a whole, though, do you welcome the fact, I guess, for those people who are then watching it, they'll have more understanding, won't they, about what happened, more understanding about this police honey trap operation? Yeah, um, I think, uh, basically, um, the way they portrayed me, really, is... Um, I, was, I was roughly like that, you know, a bit awkward and shy and everything, but, you know, and... Um, and you did say some things, didn't you, that you... Some sort of fantastical, you know, quite grim things you said during this honey trap operation. Is that fair to say? And, and is that what comes across in the drama, that there were things you said that you didn't... that weren't true, but you were sort of trying... Mm. oddly trying to impress this woman who you thought was genuinely interested in you? Well, that's it. I was just responding to what Lizzie James was telling me. And, um, I mean, any man would tell any woman a lie to get what they want from a woman, you know, so... It was just no different from that, basically. This was an, an undercover operation that was that was set up. Can you forgive the police for what happened over this? Are you able to sort of look at it now and, and understand any of what was going on behind the scenes? Because obviously they were under intense pressure, weren't they? Because yeah. they hadn't found who had killed um, Rachel and Nicole, and they were desperately trying to find out who was the person responsible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't blame the police at all. Um, I think all they were doing was doing a, their job. 
And obviously they got wrapped up in all the, the false statements people were making about me at the time. And I couldn't blame them really for you know, being convinced it was me uh, seen at that time. Yeah. yeah. And it's extraordinary to read that um, Rachel and Nikel's family actually made contact with you, didn't they? Um, a boyfriend did, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And what was that? What was that about? What did, what did Rachel and Nikel's grieving partner say? Well, it was actually you? a letter through my solicitor. Um, he actually was, it was quite an angry letter towards the police, basically saying, um, you know, for, for those years, they were convinced uh, because the police kept telling them we had the right man, you know, he's now, the, when I was released and that, you know, they were just as angry as he was. And it's uh, part of the way you sort of have dealt with it, because you have moved on in your life, haven't you? I mean, yeah. would you say that you, you are, to all intents and purposes, over it? I mean, is that too simplistic or, or no, is that that's true? that's it. That's true, yeah, yeah. I'm over it, yeah. And, and is that partly to do with, as you say, you know, you think of Rachel and the Kells family who have permanently lost their loved one. And, of course, the person who was convicted of that was also then convicted of killing another woman. Exactly, And yeah. that woman's daughter. Yeah. So there was three terrible victims of this miscarriage of justice. Yeah. Uh, and then you were, you know, you were one of the victims too. Yeah. In, in a different way. Yeah, well, I, I don't see myself as the victim anyway. You don't? No, no. I mean, uh, I never look backwards, you know, because it's backwards is negative, forwards is positive, and that's how I live my life, basically. So, I mean, when people ask me about this case, I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> so. I think, so, did you find the process of talking to the... And did you... Why did you agree to the, to the drama, actually? So, the, the writer approached you and said, would you help me? I want to write your story. Yeah. Was you initi were you initially like, yes, definitely, or did you have to think about it? Well, I had to think about it at first. Um, but um, as they explained to me that um, they wanted to uh, put forward uh, myself in a positive light, um, because people had negative thoughts about me from the newspapers and that, the tabloids. And, um, you know, they just wanted to show me more in that positive uh, frame of mind, basically. And do you think the show's done that or will be doing that? Yeah, I think it does at the, on the end episode, yeah. It is, you know, obviously a, a, a huge thing that you went through. You got over £700,000, didn't you, in compensation because of what has happened. Do you think that that can, can ever make up for it? in a sense, you know, how, how much did that enable you to be able to move on to change your future? Um, I've never been driven by money. So, you know, I mean, a lot of the money I gave away to animal charities. And that, so, you know, uh, and the money hasn't all gone. I've still got a bit left, so, you know, yeah. But, um, yeah, it didn't change my life at all, really. I mean, I, I still live in the same kind of life I was living before. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Colin, thank you so much for coming into the studio to talk to us about this. Yeah. Um, it's all available, isn't it, on, uh, on Catch Up on, on Channel 4. Yeah. Um, and, you know, let's hope it does, um, you know, rectify in those people's minds who still associate you with Rachel Nickel's murder wrongly, that it does sort of rectify your reputation in the minds of those. But it seems to me like you, in, in your own mind, I have quite remarkably um, left it behind and moved on without any bitterness. Yes, that's it. You've got to. You can't keep dwelling on things. Well, past. that's very impressive, it isn't is, it, indeed. actually? Thanks for coming in to talk to us this morning. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.